people, this podcast, I'm going to wing it even more than I usually wing it because I just came off stage and I had a little baby enlightening moment. And this is for all the uh, creative people out there uh, and what I think that you should do in terms of your trying. And uh, I wish somebody was like, talk about this because then I would remember it. Uh, I'm so tired because I've been running around like crazy and getting over the COVID and, um, you know, but I'm of the belief that things could stop any minute and so keep going. And I'm also the belief that, you know, we're doing each other's work. Like, you know, me performing for you is helpful to you who like it and, and it's helpful to me to get out, you know, and it's also good for me to be out in the scene and relevant and, and you know, the LA comedy scene and not just on the road and. And, um, yeah, but I, I, I had an epiphany or baby epiphany. And then I, about two things, uh, wokeness and bombing. And, um, I did two shows tonight, but I did two different types of shows. One last night and one tonight and different reactions. Um, three shows. I'm thinking of the two. So I did a show last night that was a uh, free show. And it was like COVID-esque where it was like outside and it was fucking, there's a tree and there's tables and people are walking by. But man, that crowd was there for it. They they loved it. They were loving live comedy and they were appreciative. And it's good, you know. I'm like, man, I came down here and, you know, Sometimes I'm like, I'm parking and I'm like, what am I, what am I going to go down? But it's so good for like the reaction of what I didn't expect, you know? And just, yeah, I did a lot of material that usually works. And, uh, and I just, uh, learned that, you know, just when you think something's going to be one way, it can be a real beautiful other way. In, a, in a, such a positive way, you know, like you don't know how things are going to be, you know, and that's, you know, that's why you can't put your ego above your art, right? Your art has got to be just do the work and forget about all the accoutrements, you know, and I'm thinking about how good this crowd was and how good the people were in such an unorthodox environment. And then I had a show tonight in a more orthodox environment and I was like, I'm going to do like 30% newer stuff and... It was good. I'm tired. It's good to try stuff. And I I guess that, you know, the issue I have is that sometimes I just feel like I can't bomb. Because if I bomb, I'm going to let people down and they're expecting me to be Jamie Kennedy, whatever that is. And great thing about comedy right now, especially in L.A., is that there's all types of shows, but the shows I do, and I do them everywhere, is a good mix of Known comics, unknown comics, and the bookers are really putting together a nice, really good mix, which is important. You know, it's good for an artist to see other vibes and vibing off people, and you don't want to get in your own echo chamber, and it's also just to, to say what's up, and, you know, just uh, the really diverse, you know, crowds, really diverse lineups, women to men to trans to non-binary uh, yes, it's, I'm seeing everybody and, uh, it's good. It's awesome. And, you know, this is what, this is how you got better as an artist and see what other, you know, people are talking about the different groups that you might not see as much in your normal life. And, and so I think that that is really important. And I am also like, well, I got to try some new stuff. So I did some newer stuff tonight and it was okay. But the crowd, the crowd, was, there was quiet moments, you know. And then um, I realized that, uh, is that you gotta, I, in order for me to be really bulletproof, I have, like, I have a lot of stuff and I can just start putting it out. I might just start, I mean, I already kind of already put the stuff on the internet, but it's like, I guess I can just start p popping together specials of stuff. But it's never going to be like, you know, I can do some big ones, you know. Eventually, you do numbers and Netflix will have you on it. But at the end of the day, it's just about getting it out there, right? And the best quality. And and I think that I, I like, really am getting tired of repeating stuff that of, of, 
of jokes. I don't want to do jokes, and I try to do less jokes. It's more like beliefs in a funny way, and I don't want to be your clown. I want to be your sounding board. And it's not fair to you, and it's not fair to me if I do the same jokes over and over again. But when you do that, well, you know, you're with newer comics or comics haven't been doing it as well and they've left they kill more than you and you're like, oh God, I'm bombing, the ego is bombing. But you have to try new things and you have to potentially bomb. You know, you try to avoid it, but that's how you get better. You know, you, you, you gotta dive in. And um, obviously it's a paid show on the weekend and give them your best stuff. But I guess what I'm saying is, is like the real bulletproof of like an artist I think is really not A, not trying to control the outcome but B, caring that much about it's hard it's hard not to care you know and I, I really have to do this I need to I need to understand my place in the universe and how I've already done enough so it's okay to not be what people expect me to be and I think that you know, when I go up there, I'm fucking now becoming like the fun uncle of comedy where people are like, oh, it's Jamie Kennedy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And I will have those moments. But, you know, the heroes of mine, you know, Richard Pryor did, you know, First Man on the Sun. Look that bit up. And George Carlin did Hippy Dippy Weatherman. And then one of the greatest things about them is like George Carlin just said, I can't do that anymore. And... George, uh, Richard Pryor was on stage in Vegas doing his act and mid-act just walked off and said, I can't do this anymore. And like, said, don't pay me the rest of the week. And they both completely fucking 180 their whole existence. And, you know, you gotta have things to back it up and you gotta have, if you watch Carlin's last few specials, last, listen to me, my accent, he's, there's only a fucking punchline at the end. It's just more like, a prophet and people are going, yeah, George, yeah, 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 yeah. Like he's, it's way, it's so good. You know, it, it's just really, and it's not at you. It's just a very strong point of view that you cannot argue with at all. And it's a massive education. It's still ahead of most comedy today. I mean, he's, he's, it's hard to do comedy because of George Carlin and Richard Pryor because they, did such the darkest stuff in the best way. So you have to do your versions of it. You know, the only thing I say is that, you know, every fucking a band has a love song, so you can talk about love in your own way, right? And then, you know, Richard Pryor, when he talked about going to Africa and, then, and that whole awakening and how he was on fire, that was a totally different take on how he was. You know, they were both young, funny guys who went deep. And, you know, clearly that's where I'm at. And I mean, I'm not like those guys in the sense that they were all in on comedy. And I, I believe I'm all in on comedy because of it chose me in a way like I, you know, cause I was really pursuing my acting career more. And then I did comedy a lot and then, you know, pursuing different stardoms because I, I love this, the, the attention and all that, you know, you can say those are the right or the wrong reasons, but now, but now comedy has been so good to me. And so I have to be good to it because it's always welcomed me in. Like, no matter how bad my career is or how hot my career is, the comedy industry, 98% of them always welcome me in. And most comedians, too. I mean, maybe not all. I don't know all of them, but they're cool. You know what I mean? Clubs have always been cool to me. You know, events have always been cool to me. Uh, some festivals, but... And so, I, you know, like, it's kind of like where I'm at. Like, I have to just do it correctly or not do it. And I... And I think that I'm funny, but I just, I'm way deeper than people realize. And it's like, I remember when I started my career, I started really fucking deep and people couldn't handle it. So that's when I would fucking go real light and make them laugh. And I was their entertainer, but I wasn't helping them grow and people don't want to hear it, you know? And now I can't do that anymore. I have to go to what I believe in. But that what I said about prior and Carlin is, you're not dumb if you don't believe what they believe. They're just going to make you laugh so hard and make you think. That you're like, wow, this is fucking interesting. And when comedians preach at you, in my opinion, I no, I don't like that. I don't like somebody like, let me tell you why it's this way. And you're dumb. 
unless it's how brilliantly hilarious. Um, smug, you know, you can't be a smug person, you know. And uh, I did a show tonight, and it was a fucking good lineup, and a dude before me murdered. God, he was so funny. And I'm like, man, this dude is murdering, and I gotta bring this fucking energy. So I just was like a pretty good energy, but then I started with, you know, my basic jokes I started with, and I got some good laughs, but not like up to his level, and then I just couldn't keep up, I'm tired, and then I'm like, I'm just gonna go into some deeper bits, because they're not feeling, I went into some of my beliefs about the vax, which usually does well, and I felt like they were a little hesitant, and I was like, oh man, this is, uh, this is, I gotta dive in, because they don't want to hear it. So now I'm already fucking not having the set that I believed I would have. So let me dig in. So uh, I just start, you know, I do this bit about rappers and how I don't sing rap music anymore because it got too many N-words in it. And three black guys in the back, I think at least one of them was gay. And he was like, oh, no. Oh, child, let's hear it. Let's hear it. And I and all the white people got quiet. And this is a. This is a, you know, an intense room. Like, this is like a comedy mecca. And um, and so I start doing the bit, and the black guys are laughing, and the white people are uncomfortable, teetering. And I'm like, I stop, you know, I do that. I'm like, guys, the black contingency has approved this bit. You can let your guard down. And then they laughed at that, and white people didn't know what to do. And I'm like, the black, the mayors of Blackville, okaying this bit and white i'm like it's okay for sherman oaks to laugh at it so then at that point i mean it got a little better but then i just dug in and i'm like you're gonna hate that bit you're gonna, you're gonna hate this bit about gender and all this shit and and at the end the only people i took pictures with were the black guys a couple of things what's funny is when that usually happens once white people it's funny asian is asian ladies were laughing too once white people do see other races laugh at jokes about themselves, they usually give in. But we're in L.A., which is crazy, which I would think, you know, it's everything's so fucking nuts. Like, you gotta, like, white people still will not laugh, which to me makes, you, makes me think you're a racist. Okay, here's my opinion. Stereotypes exist for a reason, and you have to joke about them in order to break the tension or whatever. Beliefs about different races, religions, sex, whatever. Break the tension so then we're talking about it and then do a good joke on top of it so we recognize it, joke about it, and then we can laugh about it and then learn together. That's what a good comedy should be, all right? And when people say, oh, punching down or punching... I mean, unless it's like a fucking really tried and true hack thing, like, yeah, that happens, but, okay, we, it's hard to have an hour of fucking all gold, all right? But, two, it's like, you're not the cop of comedy when people say, like, punching down. Like, everything can be joked upon, joked about. And one of the things people like is when I punch down on myself. I'm, on, I'm only doing that to get you on my side because you think I'm Jamie Kennedy, but that's, that's why I'm, like, bearded up right now and stuff. I, if I'm too fucking handsome for you, people are going to get mad at me. Low key funny. So I ingratiate myself to you. So so I'm doing it, and then and then like people. I mean, this was a this was when it became really good. It was like half the crowd, forty percent of the crowd, black and Asian, and some Latin, cracking up like hysterically laughing, and white people were like teetering uncomfortable. This is after twelve thirty at fucking night. So I'm like, and I'm like, that's that's the problem. With potential, well, people could be tired, whatever, and they could be tired, and I could also not be that funny, which I was okay funny, but I was funnier than they were giving me. If there is some woke contingent in there, that's the issue with wokeism, where white people weren't laughing at jokes black people, that black people were laughing at because white people was all, they were so smug that to say, you don't even know what's good for you. That's racist. <laughs> right like yo that's racist <laughs> i mean not really racist but kind of racist like yo you don't even know what's good for you and you're laughing so we're not going to jump in on you because you don't even realize how this joke is, is should be offensive to you but you know these are probably people that never taken the subway and they haven't you know gone to the city they haven't ever been stuck up meaning like 
robbed. I, you know, I don't want to be robbed. I was robbed one time. I hated it. Anyway, and I thought that's the issue with, with, with wokeism, if it is there. But it also could just be I'm not funny at all. I'm giving myself, I'm giving you an out here, and I'm also saying that you could be tired. Is that I know better than thou, so I will not partake in this. And what's interesting is I I really don't like it. See, I what I'm very vulnerable, right? I take a lot of uh, I'm not scared to go out on a and on a limb. And I mean, you know, sometimes I'm not vulnerable if I'm really acting out and doing stuff. That's just me to make you laugh. But I can be very quiet and vulnerable in the sense that I don't know if something's gonna work and it, and it could really piss you off. And you know, in my life, I don't give a fuck if I do it. But in my job, it's like you know, do I want to like alienate this whole fucking crowd? You know. Depends if I'm doing a guest spot or from my show. I want them to have a good time. I still want to have a good time in a guest spot, but it's like I've been doing this a long time, man. I think I have a right to that. And uh, and basically, in a nutshell, it it people think that when you're vulnerable and it's not working or something's not happening, they look at you as weak. So when I see comedians that act like they have it all together, I hate that. But like there are comedians that are just having a great set. And they do have it all together. and But that's different. That They're just killing and it's a fucking beautiful night. But there are times when you don't have it all together. But there's, to, to me, the best comedians and best artists are the people that will let you know that they're fucking drowning in their own fluid right now. And I'm trying to figure it out, all right? Go easy on me, you know? But when other people up there, that's why you see a lot of newer comedians smile and they're like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, that's really like, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I don't want to bomb. I don't want to bomb. And then you have to be able to just sit in your bomb. It's not even a bomb. You know, like I'm telling you something that wasn't really that bad, but for me, I'm like, ooh, it's also hard if I do fucking 12, 15 minutes. It's just like I got to fucking stretch, you know. But in a nutshell, this is just a little pod for the people out there that are doing something artistic that you have to. The ego is the death of all of us. It really is. And it's like I have to. I have to go out there with no expectations. People want a fucking show, man. And if I can just have people take the expectations off me, I will be so much better. But they're paying thirty dollars and they fucking have a drink and they got a babysitter. They don't want me to shit the bed. <sighs> so there's a fine line there. I'm also tired, so when I'm tired I fucking get emo, but I guess in a nutshell, I don't know. I don't wanna do my jokes. I wanna just keep doing new jokes. But you can, I can only do jokes when I'm affected by something. So I got to say what affects me. But sometimes I'm not affected. Sometimes There's so much going on right now that I'm like almost shut down. Like this Biden, you know, he, he did that speech the other day and he was like, And Kathleen, where's Kathleen at? Hey, Aunt Kathleen is at. Kath Let me see if I can do it right. Hey, man, Corn Pop was a bad dude. Corn Pop, Kathleen, is Kathleen here yet? She's out there. Kathleen's out there. Where's Kathleen? Kathleen's dead. That was the senator that died in a car crash. So the whole audience was quiet when I said that. But I said, that's not the joke. The joke is that he eulogized this woman. Huge laugh. And people are like, that's funny. I'm like, that's not funny. That's a documentary. That's not a joke. I'm just telling you the news. Hey, man, Kathleen, where's Kathleen at? She here? She died. He eulogized her. They laugh. Oh, that's creative. No, it's not. It's reality. This is reality. That's reality. I wish I was that smart. Hey, man, Corn Pop. Corn Pop was a bad dude. I'm trying to do his voice. Hunter, get in here. Give me that pipe. Um, I know somebody very smart, very high up in the food chain in a certain industry in our world, and they were like, just have that dude fucking go to the rest home and his son smoke crack and hookers all day. Like that's, And this is a super liberal. And that's what they really think, but they will never say that publicly. I was cracking up, man. Uh, I guess that's it. I'm a little off. I apologize. I'm tired. Here's the situation. I the views here are sh are shitting a bed. I just did Sam Tripoli's podcast, Tinfoil Hat. I'm so happy he had me on. Basically, I gotta join. I'm gonna. I'm on Patreon. That's growing. That's nice. But I, I'm. I think I gotta go on Rumble. I'll keep it on YouTube, but I'm going to start taking my content and putting it on Tubi. And I got to go on Rumble, man. Like, I got to get the stuff seen. You understand? It's fucking crazy. Like, the views, there's no way these views are real. 
people have way less content and they have way bigger views. And I'm sorry, it's not, it's not, it's not a fair fight. Not a fucking fair fight. So I'm gonna try to go on there and keep doing it here, but uh, leave some comments in there for me. Like, subscribe, do the whole thing. Much love to you. Peace.